Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Military Mondays. If you and I don't know each other, I would love to get to know you. Please put a comment below or reach out to me via Facebook, or if you're watching this on YouTube, comment and reach out to me. I would love to connect. I do these um, shows every single Monday morning. It's either a military story where I highlight a veteran or a spouse um, or I talk about marketing tips because that's what my husband and I do. And this morning, I have an amazing networker and a gold star wife. So a military, former military spouse, gold star wife, Danielle. Danielle and I met out networking and there seems to be a common thread in my Military Mondays and that is a whole networking story. So welcome, Danielle, to Military Mondays. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you for having me. So, yeah. so tell me, we, we've got Jake on too, and we'll get to Jake because you met Jake through networking also. So there's a common theme, but let's start with your, because I truly believe the wife um, serves also. So let's talk a little bit, a short um, snippet of your background with the military and um, how your husband served. Awesome. So my husband served as an Air Force reservist during Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Um, and we met during that time. He was activated and did hot drops over theater between Kuwait and Saudi. And then from there, we got married, had two new babies and was really wanting to kind of make the military his career. So he jumped plane and we went full time army hua. <laughs> and <laughs> became active duty with the army and did a bunch of stuff through there for the army. He was a satellite communication and repair specialist, um, way back in the day on the back of a Humvee and a big six foot, you know, um, I guess detachable, I don't know what the correct word is, um, satellite dish. And, um, he did a hardship tour through Korea. We were stationed at Campbell, um, way back in the day. And then in 97, because of illnesses and injuries related to military service. Um, we were medically discharged. Fast forward um, till about 2012 or so, he got really sick, um, started showing some symptoms that are very related to uh, Gulf War syndrome. And that's actually kind of what is the secondary cause of his death. His first was a heart attack. And um, I took care of him from 2012 until 2017, full-time, 100% permanent total disabled through the VA rated, that type of thing. And then upon his death, um, proved the service connection of his heart attack um, because of the undiagnosed cardiac disease. Um, but military and the VA had treated him for hypertension as well as hypotension. So it was already there. It just needed to you know, connect the dots. So then fast forward to 2017 and his death, and then kind of the reason we're here and the, how I met Jake was um, in 2018, the funeral home I used to cremate my husband did not cremate him. I would find out they had actually dismembered and sold his body parts without me knowing. And um, after that, when I moved from Montrose, Colorado, where that happened back to Colorado Springs to kind of start life anew and what without David, um, started networking to build a business and in the process met you obviously and then met Jake and Jake and I happened to be at an event called Memoirs Colorado Springs and was doing my kind of one year update um, as, as a celebration for that event but was asked to come on stage and kind of give an update to my story and not much had really changed at that point other than we were still waiting for uh either a trial or plea deals. We'd been in a two year investigation, two years waiting through COVID and afterwards to get to the court date of whatever, whatever that was a trial or plea deal. And just said, you know, and at this point, once this is to a complete a place where I feel closure or healing or a start to healing, I'd like to start enacting and changing laws because technically what she did in the state of Colorado, not illegal. And even at the federal level, really not illegal. So as a society, as a, a society considers themselves civilized, the fact that this has happened, not just to myself, but to eight other, 800 other families in this particular instance, as well as three other 
incidents is stemming back to 2012 by different other individuals within this body brokering business. Um, it's the wild west of no oversight. People get to do whatever they want. We hear the gruesome, sensational tab, uh, you know, headlines, but we don't hear the stories behind it. No one's affecting change. And again, I still don't know if it's an effective use of my gold star status to go and enact and change laws, but I kind of feel like, hmm, we said we weren't going to cry. So we're going to try not to cry. I feel like David's still fighting that good fight. Yep. And I'm on this side fighting the good fight. And Jake came along, saw the value in the story and said, Hey, I've got some political background. I'm in film, film school. Let's rock this. And so tag Jake, you're it. Talk about it. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, sure. So like Daniel said, I had met her through networking and I heard her story and it, it, it's honestly one of those stories that, you know, you don't know how to respond to because mm -hmm. who would have fathomed such a thing could happen. Yeah, um, really. And so it's definitely something that when I heard it the first time, I didn't, I didn't really talk to Daniel about it much or whatever. I kind of just digested it. Um, but after a while earlier this year, I decided to get into the film industry and I'm someone um, with my political background and whatnot that, Whatever I do, I want there to be some sort of a change, you know, that, that comes of it, something positive. And I saw this as a great opportunity to one, tell this story because people need to know this happened, especially to a veteran. And, and then two, um, by doing that, uh, hopefully we get enough people outraged that this happened so that we can create change. Um, and that's what we're wanting to do with this film. Awesome. And Danielle, I think it, it's just my personal opinion. I think it is a good use of your gold star status because how many other veterans has this affected? We don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. only time will tell as the story gets out and people understand what's happening here and mm -hmm. probably all over um, the U.S. to get those laws changed. So um, I commend you for trying to take um, or not trying, but taking a tragedy in your life and making good out of it and helping others. Uh, I know you, that's just who you are. I Thank mean, you. um, we're talking about, you know, your background and you were, you took five years to take care of David and put your life on hold in a way. Um, and I know that now I know that's not what the topic of this was, but I do want to bring out that you help families, whether they be military or civilian families with finances, um, and helping with that. So, um, you just have a giving heart and you just want to help in any way you can. And if I can help to get the word out about this by doing this interview, um, it's just my small contribution to, um, to helping you to win this, this battle. Um, so, um, I know that a trailer came out Friday. Was it Friday? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, Jake and, or Danielle, one of the two of them will put it in the comments below so that you can watch the trailer and hear, um, I watched it and it just, blows my mind that things like this can happen and that there aren't laws in place yeah. that during the trailer they talk about this would be like a misdemeanor um the laws in Colorado and I'm like what mm -hmm. it's just a misdemeanor to yeah so representative uh Matt Soper has done his best, you know, to kind of start the ball rolling because this happened in his district in the state, right? So um, he actually changed a couple of laws. I don't exactly know what they are. I probably should go learn that as I, since I want to go change the laws, but I haven't gotten that far, right? But um, there's a part of this that, yeah, at the time, abuse of a, cor a corpse or whatever in the state of Colorado was truly a misdemeanor. It needs to be a felony. And there's no federal law around abuse of a corpse. There's none. And the industry thrives on, it's called the body brokering industry. Reuters did a five, seven part series. It's a hard series to read. I've read it. Um, the individual Megan Hess who did this particular um, 
grotesque atrocity to my husband and 800 other, 800 other families, not just in the Colorado um, location, but because of where Montrose is, it's a high tourist population. And so there were families that found out that, you know, they thought they had, you know, cremated a loved one, interred them and come to find out what they've interred is most likely not their loved one. Um, and that's, you know, that's sad, but the body brokering industry, they play on the emotions of the time. And that is really one of the worst times of human existence, right? Is the loss of a loved one. And they play on those emotions and it, you're in a fog and you can't make decisions and you're trying to make the best decisions given the information and knowledge you have. I personally think that entire industry m- misrepresents what they're doing. Um, I was listening to a podcast that happened to feature me as well. And again, like I said, there are, are instances leading back to 2000, the early 2000s of this happening. And even the CDC actually looked at one and didn't do anything about it. Like I, I I'm floored by just the dysregulation. Like you said, I'm in the financial industry. Jake was in the real estate in, industry. There is oversight within the industry itself, as well as the government that says, you don't get to mistreat people. You don't get to mistreat their money. You don't get to mistreat their property. Well, in some instances under the eyes of the law, cremains and the body is somebody's property. That was my husband. He wasn't property, but he was important to me. Yeah. More important than money, my house, everything, except for my kids, like, right. And yet there's no oversight there. And it boggles my mind. And to your point, yeah, that it's not a felony that you can do this to a corpse and what she's charged with her and her mother is mail fraud. Like that's the best they could do because they shipped bodies diseased and otherwise not appropriately tested, um, didn't notify the families that they were doing this, that's for sure. But they sold these fam- the, the body parts and the bodies out of country as well, to Saudi Arabia, to China, to parts unknown. Those families will never get those, sp- never get those back. Some families don't even know what happened. And I think the other grotesque piece of this is there is a couple of families or several families that they have found their loved one's body parts on an online catalog, a picture catalog of body parts. And that company has been notified that they're, that this happened, they're part of this. And that company has yet to take those body parts down. Those, those, that family and, and they're, the law protects them. And in instances where prior to this event, this particular situation, one of the things, <laughs> there was a lawsuit around it and it was more of that the doctors and the medical community that had purchased or rented the use of this, these body parts. Um, it was a violation of their contract had nothing to do with the families. In fact, the law never talked to the families who never agreed to donation or didn't understand the donation that they were given or a host of other things. So the lack of regu- regulation education is mind boggling. And I think about another gold star spouse that I know whose husband was actually killed in action and she has little ones and the amazing strength and fortitude that she had when she was notified of his death. And I would just think, I don't want that to happen to her. I don't want that to happen to me. I didn't want that to happen to me. Didn't want that to happen to my kid. And I sure as heck don't want that happening to somebody else. And there's tons of coverage of this out there, but not in any effective manner. And that's what I'm trying to change because no one deserves to find out that their mother was blown up by a military experience um, experiment because, because the, somehow the, the body broker themselves illegally obtained that body and then sold it to the U S military. Like the U S military needs to do better. Yeah. And so it feels like I'm taking on this big, huge, overwhelming Goliath. But at the same time, I'm like, we can do better as a society. We have to do better by society because if we don't, if this continues to be unregulated, everyone is going to be affected. Everyone, because death affects everyone. But if we don't get the different sides of the industry to regulate amongst themselves, as well as some federal and state oversight, and I'm the last one to call for more laws, but there has to be for some, for some of this, just simply because it, it's literally the wild west, if you will, of no laws and people get to do what they want. And that's not okay. Yeah, no, we all have 
rights as humans while we're alive, we should have rights as humans after mm -hmm. we pass. Exactly. And, and exactly. the family should. So um, I'm glad that I could have you on this morning. Um, this will be broadcast on YouTube. It will be put out on YouTube. I know the trailer is out on YouTube. Um, I ask anybody watching right now, if you would do me a favor and like and share this, let's get this, let's get a million plus um, views on this video around the world and help this cause so that this doesn't happen again and that we can get laws in place to protect the families. Um, because this is just, it blew my mind when Danielle told me what had happened. I was like, what? I like how right. it, it's, it's outside most people's comprehension unless you've gone through it. So yeah. I thank you for being brave and being on this morning. Um, anything else you want to add or Jake, anything you want to add, um, about the documentary and when people, I know the trailer's out when, when we can expect to, um, the documentary to be released. Sure. So, um, besides the trailer this past Friday, we also released a proof of concept. Um, so it's about 10 minutes long, just showing people an idea of what this documentary will be about. Um, but in order to make a full length documentary uh, that re obviously requires um, money. And so we're needing people's help with that as well. So whether you go to our Facebook page or our website, cremainsunknown.com, there's a link uh, where people can uh, pledge support if they, if they feel uh, so obliged to do so. Um, and then hopefully, you know, it, it's hard to give a hard date when the documentary will be out as we'll just kind of follow Danielle's uh, events unfold here. So, so the, the moral of this story I'm hearing is we want to get to like a million views. And if those one, 1 million people just donated $1, you'd have $1 million um, toward producing this documentary. So, you know, maybe you can't do a lot if you're watching this, maybe a dollar is all you can do, but a dollar can make a big difference. If you can do more than that, then great, please um, reach out and support in a bigger fashion if you can. But if not, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars makes a huge difference when, um, if we can get this video to go viral um, and get it seen all around the world. So again, please like and share um, and get the word out about um, Danielle's story, please. So. Thanks so much for being on this morning, Danielle. Any last words? Just thank you to everyone who has stepped forward and has offered to help in any way, shape or form. Shape or form. Um, huge thank you to Jake because so far all the funding he has done directly himself. He hasn't asked me for anything. Um, we're not trying to make money off of this. What we're trying to do is make sure that it, the story gets out there. Um, and we will do it regardless if we make the money or not. We're just not, you know, it's just going to take, take a longer, longer time <laughs> than we had anticipated. And the, we don't have a date because while we have plea deals from the two people who did this sentencing's not till January, 2023. And even then, I don't know that that's going to be the finality of this particular part of this. I don't even know if that's the end, the, the end of my husband being returned to me so I can enter him at the national cemetery because I've hit blocks with that. So if anybody wants to help with that piece as well, that would be amazing. Um, because right now I, I still have open grief and I have open trauma and I have no closure on either one. So, and that's five years. Um, so please just go to the cremains.com, cremainsunknown.com. Um, take a look. If you feel um, compelled to do so, please do so. If not, I understand too, but even if you just share, like, and just share it just even if it's just the oh my god you, i'm not gonna i can't believe that this happened that gives us kind of the the exposure that we're looking for again it's not i'm not in this for the money i i could care less about money and i don't like say that flippantly it's just that's not my goal with this my goal is to go out and change laws um and prevent this from happening to anybody else Awesome. Again, thank you for being on this morning, Danielle and Jake. Thanks for um, meeting Danielle out networking and seeing value in her story and um, getting put.
putting this together and putting the documentary together so that we can affect change um, in in the U.S. and maybe throughout the world eventually, but we'll start here at home. Mm -hmm. So with that, thank you again for being on. Thank you everyone for watching. If you are a veteran or currently serving or a spouse that has your own business or supports the military in some way or has a story like this morning's, please reach out to me. I would love to feature you on a Military Mondays and you can go to military Mondays with an S dot info, military Mondays dot info. And Danielle will put links below. Danielle, Jake, and myself will put links below um, in this Facebook live so that you can reach out and connect with them and help in any way you can. So with that, have an awesome week and I will see you right here next Monday on Military Mondays. Bye everyone.